Okay, so let's talk about looking into the past. Can you really look into your past? Well, looking at the future is a crazy thing, but looking at the past, not so much really. The easiest way to look at your past is just take a camera and take a snapshot or just take a video camera and record a video. And you always have that portion of your past saved, right? You can always go back and look at the past. But that's not really what we're talking about in this video. We're talking about literally looking at the past. Is that possible? Well, kind of, yes. So let's take an example here. We are on the earth and somewhere far, far away, there's the moon, right? So that's the moon. Now, the thing is the distance between the earth and moon is about 300,000 kilometers. And the light that leaves the moon takes about one second to cover this distance. The speed of light is of course, three into 10 raised to eight meter per second, which means 300,000 kilometers per second. So in one, one second, it travels 300,000 kilometers, which is roughly the distance that the moon is at. So the light that leaves the moon reaches us one second later. So the photon that carries the information of how the moon looks reaches us one second later. So this photon is basically carrying the information about how the moon looked one second ago. So basically when you're looking at the moon, you're looking at one second into the past of the moon. You're not looking at the, at the current version of the moon, but you're looking at how the moon looked one second ago. Now, of course, looking at one second into the past is not that big of a deal. So let's go a little bit further beyond, right? Let's go and look at the sun. Now this image is not to scale, but the sun is around 150 million kilometers from the earth. And that distance is covered by light in about eight minutes. So the distance from the sun to the earth is covered in eight minutes. So the light that leaves the sun or the photon that leaves the sun takes eight minutes to reach the earth, which means this photon that just reached you when you look at the sun is eight minutes old, which means you're looking at the sun like how it was eight minutes ago. Now, just hypothetically, if the sun at this very moment suddenly vanished, you wouldn't notice the sun vanishing until eight minutes later because the last photon that left the sun before it vanished will still reach you eight minutes later. And all the photons that left the sun during those eight minutes are still reaching you. And those photons will still keep you under the illusion that the sun exists until the last photon reaches you eight minutes later. And then you come to know that the sun has vanished, but not at this very moment, but it vanished eight minutes ago but you only got to know about it now. So you're looking at the sun eight minutes into the past of the sun. Now, if the sun is eight minutes old and the moon is one second old, what about the nearest star, which is not the sun? So the nearest star that's not the sun is called Proxima Centauri. And that is 4.2 light years away, which means light from Proxima Centauri reaches us in 4.2 years, right? So you're looking at Proxima Centauri as it was 4.2 years away. Now, if you go further beyond, let's go to, instead of the nearest star, let's go to the nearest galaxy, which is Andromeda. Now, Andromeda being our nearest galaxy is so far away that light leaving Andromeda takes 2.5 million years to reach us. And it's only the nearest galaxy. It's not even one of the million other galaxies that we can look at. It's just the nearest galaxy. And that itself is 2.5 million years old. The, the version of Andromeda that we look at is so old that we don't even know if it exists as we see it today. It might be very different from what we are looking at because 2.5 million years have passed since the light that left Andromeda is reaching us today. Well, Andromeda is just the nearest galaxy, as I said. What about all those far, far away objects that we can look at in the night sky? What is the farthest object that we can look at uh, that the humans have detected? Well, the farthest object that the humans have detected, and it has a really, really crazy name, but let's go really far away here. Again, this is not to scale, but the farthest object that we have detected is called 
GRB 090423. This is the farthest object that we've detected and the light from this object takes 13 billion years to reach us. 13 billion years. Now just get us to get a sense of that, how far is the object in terms of kilometers? It's crazy even to you know start to write it down, but let's just do that here. It's that many kilometers away from the earth. And light itself takes 13 billion years to travel this distance. Now, this is a very intriguing thing. But before I get into why it's so interesting, let's just go over the term light year. Light year is pretty interesting because you wouldn't want to write this number here when you talk about these gigantic spaces, right? The universe is so vast that you don't want to talk about the universe in terms of kilometers. You don't want to write this crazy number every time that you want to talk about this crazy object here that also has a crazy name, GRB090423. You don't want to write this number. So what do you do? Well, you can really talk about it in terms of how long light takes to cover this distance. So light takes 13 billion years to cover this distance. So instead of saying that this object is these many kilometers away, you can easily say that this object is 13 billion light years away from us, right? And that literally means light takes 13 billion years to cover this distance. So light year is basically a measure of distance and it's not a measure of time like most people think it is. Just because it has the word year doesn't mean that it's a measure of time. It is a measure of distance and more specifically, it's a measure of the distance that light covers in a year, right? Now, it doesn't have to just be light years. We can talk about light minutes, light seconds. These are also measures of distance, but they're not that widely used because when you talk about light minutes, you can use kilometers because it's not that big of a distance here. So instead of saying that the sun is 150 million, million kilometers away from the earth, we can say that it is eight light minutes away, right? Because it takes eight minutes for the light from earth to reach from the sun to reach earth. So it's light, it's eight light minutes away from um, the earth. Well, it's the same thing with the moon. Instead of saying that it's 300,000 kilometers away, you could say that it's one light second away, right? So you could use um, light seconds and light minutes, but we generally use light years because we don't want to write these crazy numbers. And um, it really becomes a problem when we start talking about, um, you know, distances that light takes years to cover. All right, now let's get back to this diagram here that we have and try to see why this object here, this GRB 090423 is the farthest object that we've detected. Why hasn't light from anything beyond this, beyond this threshold of 13 billion light years, why hasn't anything from beyond that threshold reached the earth yet? Here we have the earth, this tiny small thing here, that's the earth. Why hasn't anything from beyond this threshold reached us yet. Why is this object, this GRB 090423, the farthest object that we've looked at? Shouldn't light be reaching us? Shouldn't, be, shouldn't we be able to see things more than 13 billion years into their past? Well, the answer to that is that the universe itself is 13.8 billion years old. So any light that has left from beyond this threshold has not had time to reach us yet. These photons have only traveled this much distance because this here is 13 billion, 13 billion light years, right? From here to here. And they've only had time to travel this much. They still have to cover all this distance and not enough time has passed since the beginning of the universe for, this, for these photons to cover this distance all the way and to reach Earth. So that's the reason why we've not seen things that are beyond 13 billion light years. Not to say there isn't anything beyond 13 billion light years. There are a lot of objects beyond this threshold that's as far as we can see because only that much time has passed since the beginning of the universe. So then there's the most interesting question, right? So when you look at the sun, let's do this again. So when you're at the earth and you look at the moon, you're saying that we're looking one second into the past. When you're looking at the sun, you're saying we're looking eight minutes into the past. 
when you're looking at Proxima Centauri, you're saying we're looking at 4.2 light years into the past. So then the question is, you say that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. So if we look 13.8 billion light years away, shouldn't we be seeing 13.8 billion years into the past, which is the beginning of the universe, right? So if we look far enough, shouldn't we be seeing the creation of the universe? Do we see the creation of the universe if we look at 13.8 billion light years away? Well, that's a good question and I'll try to answer that in my next video.